Have you ever tried to fill the void within your heart with something completely ridiculous and truly unhealthy? So much so that it takes a life of its own and ends up consuming you. Me neither. Anyway, that's what Maroa does. Ayashimon is the story of this unfortunate boy detached from reality who really just wants to be a manga protagonist, but has somehow unfortunately or fortunately surpassed the limitations of everyone around him, leaving him in a similar predicament as before, unable to be the manga protagonist he desires to be. He lacks a worthy adversary for his strength, and it really boils down to one simple front. Maruo is unfit for the world that he is living in, and that is why he dreams of escaping within the pages of his manga. Underlying those dreams, however, is this deeply embedded and disguised survival instinct. Maruo was abused, preyed upon by the person who was meant to protect him, his father, who in his head as a young child, he crafted as this villain, his final boss, the culmination of his story arc. However, in the end, his father managed to still disappoint him and fail to give him the satisfying conclusion to the story he had crafted. His father was weak. Now, Maro had nothing to fill the emptiness within him. However, he's nearly an adult with no path forward, expelled from school, no family, and feared all around. He has too little control of his completely absurd superhero level strength and just leaves a wake of destruction around him. Nobody wants Maruo and Maruo just wants to have a job where he fights and that is where he's happiest. He has done what every adult or those approaching adulthood will do or has done lowered their motherfucking expectations because indeed doesn't exactly have listings for manga protagonists but as those who are destinies are intertwined will always find each other Urara crosses his path with at least a dozen yakuza in tow with a very intention of killing her as maruo is describing his ideal job of one where he could fight guys all day in this case however instead of a part-time job he may have made a lifetime commitment instead but same thing, honestly. As he discovers that there is a world out there filled with demons that will put up a fight against him where he can live out his manga protagonist's dreams. And this is only halfway through the first chapter. This story has it all. Good world building, compelling characters, a clear plot line, and a promise of increasingly exciting fights. The world of Ayashimon is set in Japan, but it is not the Japan we know. This is a world where Ayashimon secretly make the world move forward. They do a lot of their dealings in Kabukicho Shinjuku, which if you are unfamiliar with, is the red light district within Tokyo. Ayashimon takes the opportunity to transform this area into something supernatural, something beyond what you would imagine. But what are Ayashimon? They are supernatural beings that have the ability to take on human forms and disguise themselves. Largely, a lot of the Ayashimon exist within the shadows and the fringes of society involved with the dealings of the Yakuza and vying for the power that lies in the control of Kabukicho Shinjuku. They exist as mere foot soldiers or large players in the ongoing war between families. Really, their influence is the gravity of the moon that pulls the tide of the human experience. At the very least, within this area, it is evident that there is a balance to the interaction. A few things are hinted within the story that you could miss if you blinked, that enhance the world and give you an idea of what it's like to step within this environment that the Ayashimon reside. There are mentions of an accord as what to do about humans, and likely more laws that we will also learn down the road as we are introduced to yet another interesting facet of this universe dirty cops. In this universe where the main four Ayashimon families are fighting, we are shown a cop who uses excessive force to deal with Urara and instead of going through the proper channels, simply feeds that information about Urara to the Enma family, which begins a manhunt. This will surely be the catalyst for many, many conflicts later on as it has already immediately sparked movement. And that is only one of the families vying for power. We have yet to meet 
all of the players of interest within these families. But yet, even with a small glimpse, we are given a taste of how sick and twisted they can be, juxtaposed to how compassionate they also are. A very human spectrum of complex characteristics and motivations that contrast the otherness of Ayashimon that had previously been established. The head of the Enma family is literally a sick, twisted fuck that carves out Ayashimon into art as living sculptures as punishment to get around the fact that Ayashimon who lose their corporeal form will simply gain it back within a hundred or so years. He is truly sick and takes pride in it. While characters like this can be unpalatable or make you uncomfortable, I think that the creative cruelty that he implements foreshadows for us what really Ayashimon will be in the future. Brutal. Unfair and if done correctly, satisfying to overcome. I can only imagine in the future, the array of characters we can meet can only expand as we haven't even been introduced to all of the families yet. One of the families literally run a host club. And now, while I wouldn't like in a Yakuza gang to say a host club run by privileged high schoolers, interesting and charismatic players are sure to come about when a host club is in play. In addition, there is a family that runs a chain of hotels and a motherfucking biker gang. We know quite little about the families that have taken interest in this silent war that is only moments from exploding at the scenes with conflict, blood, and death. If done right and explored thoroughly, there are many avenues that the story can go into and perhaps contribute to the power scaling that we will talk about later. This is just the beginning. Underlying those themes and topics, however, are the really juicy parts of the story for me. We have revenge plots, traumatic backstories, and complex relationships. I won't spoil any of the details for you. But speaking of complex relationships, let's talk about our dynamic duo, Maruo and Urara. Because out of all of the relationships in this manga, complex, they are not. These two are so complementary, almost to a fault. Urara is the mastermind with a plan and a taste for vengeance that cannot be quenched. And Maruo is a fucking dumbass who has somehow accomplished his entire goal and surpassed it so hard it brought him back to square one. Unemployable with no avenue for his goals. But at least he's super strong. He's not all bad though. Maruo is super helpful and even when down on his luck, he protected Urara from those chasing her. Surprisingly, this care is reciprocated by Urara who upon finding out that Maruo was human, offers herself up to the members of the Enma clan chasing her, creating an avenue for Maruo to escape. These are two complete opposites, but complementary in a way that is both endearing and compelling. While reading the manga, you will get the feeling that Urara will take them far while truly wondering where Maruo will evolve because there is a hard ceiling for punch thing hard as a character trait. And there is indeed a looming feeling of the ceiling quickly approaching as Maruo is almost quickly bested at the gates entrance of this world and that is where we get the revelation from Urara as to who Maro is. Don't worry I won't spoil it for you but this big reveal this early on tells me one thing very clearly. This manga has more for you. Ayashimon's world and story has a feeling of expanding definitively. As I am writing this video, there are only seven chapters of this manga and the exposition is so clearly well-defined. And while the story may not be one that is incredibly unique, Ayashimon takes this power struggle, revenge plot, action, drama, and turns it on its head with the individual motivations of each characters and the inevitable exploration of perhaps many different creatures within Japanese mythology and the unobtrusive yet intriguing mystery of who Maruo truly is and maybe even further who Maruo is shaping up to be. This manga after all has incredibly visually pleasing and exciting fights thanks to him. He is the club that the demon wields with a story of his own. 
Maru is finally getting his moments where he is facing tougher and tougher opponents who can no longer be beaten with the ease that he had once done. There is a constant promise of even bigger enemies because of Urara's desire to rise through and the serendipitous system of ritual duels where the best fighters simply win. Through battle and through hardship, we continue to learn more about Maruo, like the fact that he is still struggling with the trauma of his youth and that once in a while he does in fact prove that he can use his brain although with much difficulty but without urara the power scale would not increase their relationship is truly symbiotic and that's why i fear that they will later on be separated we already saw that urara was the gateway both metaphorically and physically for Maruo to reach his manga protagonist's goals, but their symbiosis only exists because their goals align. We know eventually that Maruo will grow, but will that growth be reflected back into Urara, who has harbored her feelings of revenge for a long time? We know from a lot of tropes that roots of vengeance tend to sow themselves deep into the hearts and minds of the people who are consumed by it. Karapika from Hunter x Hunter is an excellent example. His involvement with the spiders put everyone at risk, the entire arc of York knew, and is simply showing how deep Karapika's obsession had gone and his battle to retain his humanity, despite his revenge consuming more and more of him each day. And with the latest chapter of Ayashimon, we get a harrowing revelation that this fate is mere steps away from Urara and Maruo. Is Urara truly the tough, ruthless Yakuza boss she enacts the part of, or is she simply alone looking for answers and vengeance to sweeten the deal? What do you think? Is there a future for Maruo and Urara to carve out their space within the Ayashimon world, or have they delved too much too fast? I ran a poll on this and it seems like a lot of you were either reading or at the very least interested in Ayashimon. So I hope this video lit ablaze your curiosities even just a little bit. I rarely get excited about brand new series because I am one very busy and two very picky. But Ayashimon shows me a lot of promise and that promise is backed up by how the writing is laid out and how the characters move through the plot. I hope that this retains its promise. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. On your screen should be a video from my channel that YouTube thinks that you will like the best and I hope you give it a watch. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.